Hey guys, Jason James here, Life in Las Vegas. Uh, welcome to the podcast. This is number 12, and we're going to go through some stuff. So what's happening in the news, future Vegas, and uh, all kinds of other things coming up. But anyway, if you haven't already liked or subscribed, or if you have some kind of notion like, oh yeah, maybe I'll subscribe to this channel, now's a good time to hit that bell button. Definitely give it a like, and while you're at it, why don't you just subscribe anyway? We got some good news. We keep it entertaining for you. And basically, uh, Vegas is going to move along. This too will pass. And, you know, everyone's under, you know, house arrest or whatever it might be, uh, whatever you want to call it for yourself. But yeah, Vegas is uh, definitely a, a slow city. If you've seen some of our other videos, I take you on a little tour of Las Vegas and basically show you around the uh, empty ghost town of Fremont Street, uh, downtown Las Vegas, and I work my way all the way down the strip. But yeah, if you're interested in that video, I'll leave it in the description below. And um, and we'll just get right on to the news. But basically, um, right near the stadium, they've got a new development going in. The Brass Cap Development um, and uh, Industrial Investment Company has uh, definitely uh, broke grounds on the the uh, back end of the stadium, Allegiant Stadium, that is. Um, they're going to do a 22,000 square foot industrial space for probably, you know, a lot of shops and uh, restaurants and uh, things like that. But uh, yeah, that's going to be in the back end of that. So we're looking forward to that uh, being built for, you know, creates more jobs, creates more, uh, you know, things for people to do here soon as Vegas gets up uh, rolling and stuff like that. You know, our golf courses are, were a big controversy in the last couple of uh, days here. Is the, the golf courses are now shut down. They don't see it as an essential business to operate. Um, I don't know, man. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's like, I don't know how it lasted that long. But I guess, you know, you have O.J. Simpson that golfs, you know, he lives here. So... Uh, Mike Tyson lives here. You've got some other, you know, stars and celebrities that live here as well. And yeah, they don't want you golfing. So that kind of puts a little damper on OJ. I don't know if you've seen his tweets, but uh, he has like a Twitter. It's pretty comical. Pardon me while I take some Vegas juice. Take a swill of my Vegas juice. There you go. You know, we got to stay inside. But also, you know, they have liquor delivery service here. I don't know if you guys know about this, but Clark County here approves uh, delivery of liquor services here. And it's going to go on through uh, April 30th, so the end of the month here. So we've still got a couple of weeks to um, endure here. I don't know how much of May we're going to have to, you know, sit around and sit through this kind of stuff. But hopefully this ends soon and you're all doing well. Take care of yourselves. You know, if you feel that your immune system's a, a little, you know, on the weak side, you might want to do some like vitamin C and, you know, try some herbal teas. Those are come, some easy things to do to boost your immune system. Maybe you have some other things like sweating it out. You know, maybe you like to do a home workouts. That's what I do. I do a lot of like home workout, but most of my stuff is like rubber band systems. You know, I do the band you know, the stretchy bands. Uh, it works for me. Uh, I feel that I get a better workout than I do for more than free weights. So basically, I just do three, like, for example, I'm just, I'm not going to show you my workout. I'm just going to let you know what I do. So basically, if I want to do like a leg workout, I'll start from the bottom up. So I'll do like squats. I can put the rubber band because it's basically a big loop and you have different tension um, thicknesses to the rubber band systems. You've all seen them. And basically, I can do squats with it and just hold it up and do squats or hold it at my feet and hold it accordingly and do, you know, deadlifts or whatever. But I do basically three sets of 10 to 12 reps. I make sure I can, you know, struggle with it a bit here and there. And that's pretty much all I do through the whole body is work out, you know, do curls, presses, different kind of movements and then I'll do a, a series of stretching because I'm older uh, I do have to do a stretch a lot so I do stretching and I go to the park uh, and run so we have a local park here I live in the northwest side of Las Vegas and we have this giant park pretty well social distancing is not a problem there 
Uh, but I run, you know, some sprints with uh, Lucy, our dog. Where is she? Is she sleeping? Yeah, she's sleeping. She, uh, yeah. But she likes to run. I run. I throw a frisbee. I run, you know, I run with her and all that stuff. But, you know, 10 to 12 reps of that kind of stuff. Ten, you know, 10 sprints or whatever it might be. But real simple stuff. You know, anybody can do it. You know, just start with a simple workout. You know, you have to start slow and start simple. Because if you do overload your body with a bunch of over strenuous stuff, it's very difficult to continue the workout. And that's why most people quit. So they'll try to do a P90X workout. And the next day they're like, what? I have to do this how many more? Other 90 days? You got to be kidding me. Uh, so that's kind of it right there. Um, but yeah, if you're older and stuff like that, so you want to take it easy and do what you can you don't want to overdo it um you know especially now that i'm older i definitely feel like i overdo it and uh i pay for it the next day for sure but if you keep your carbs low and your sugars low you shouldn't have that problem because it keeps the inflammation down in your body so that's the key that's the hardest part people don't understand is like well i'm so hungry after a workout i just want to eat everything and that's what you don't want to do. You want to have like a um, high protein diet right after you work out or stay with a high protein as much as you can, uh, like vegetables, uh, steak, chicken, eggs, you know, that kind of keep it simple as you can because you get the best results that way. So I used to be a trainer and how to train people. I used to be a bodybuilder back in the day, won many of shows and uh did a lot with the industry kind of stuff, so I uh, kind of know what I'm talking about. Just not blowing a bunch of smoke at you. But, um, yep, it's really interesting if you keep it simple and um, just stick with a routine that works for you. And you have to stay with that routine. But your diet, the only way you're going to see results is through your diet. And everybody knows that, but that's the hardest thing people got to do is get into that mindset of like, okay, you know, if I keep a high-fat, high-protein, low-carb diet... I'm good to go. So you just got to learn to love broccoli, chicken, you know, brown rice is okay, but not too much. Um, you know, Brussels sprouts, vegetables, salads. I do like tomato, onion, and mix vinegar and oil and a little bit of salt. That's perfect for uh, any kind of, any anybody really. Um, a lot of water. I do drink coffee, so that's kind of my downfall is coffee. But what I do to my coffee is I put coconut oil. I'll put like a little teaspoon of coconut oil in there. I know everyone's, oh yeah, you're into the keto thing. It's like, it's like no, it's actually been around for a while. Um, bodybuilders used to do the keto thing back in the day when they're cutting and stuff like that. I've done it. Everybody that wants to shed weight and lose weight knows that ketogenic diets work. I don't know why people make a big deal out of uh, you know a diet. Uh, some people will say, well, you can eat all, anything you want and still work out and do all this stuff. Yeah, but you got the thing with that is eating what you want is eating less of anything you want is the, the big key. And nobody gets that either. But anyway, hope you're all doing well. You're surviving. Hopefully you've, you've, you've uh, you filed for unemployment so you can get some extra cash coming in to pay for uh, food and whatever you have to do is... Uh, Keep the phone, your cell phone on, you know, all that stuff. Because I want you to watch our stuff, you know. <laughs> I want you to click that click that subscribe button for more info. And uh, by the way, if you're interested in my fitness uh, page, it's good. Fitness Shortcuts is the uh, thing. I'll leave a link down below when we're done with this. But um, if you're interested in any kind of fitness or stuff like that, I give some really good advice on uh, fitness. It's mostly, it's going to be mostly diet. I'll be honest with you. Um, what I tell people is find an activity that you like doing. If it's bodybuilding, bodybuilding. I don't advocate gyms. Uh, going to a gym unless you're younger and that's a place where you socialize and, and get out and have fun. <clears throat> but uh, at the same time, it can be uh, you know counterproductive as far as you know constantly looking at your phone, waiting for a machine, you know, stuff like that. So I have a love-hate with gyms. I love gyms because they have a lot to offer, but it's it's kind of a thing when it's too many people in there and you can't do anything, that's where it gets problematic. And so I love home workouts. I love going to the park. 
getting some sprints in and doing things like that. I find that it's faster, it's more efficient, and I get a lot more done during the day. So that's my take on that. I'll leave a link. Anyway, let's move on to this Las Vegas news stuff. Because, you know, I do live here. I am a resident, but I live here about five years. I'm from Michigan. And I moved out of Michigan and lived in uh, Aspen, Colorado for a couple of years. Had some friends that lived there. And hopefully they're doing okay because I hear Colorado got hit pretty pretty hard with the, uh, the outbreak thing. Um, so uh, not sure really what's going on. I just look at, uh, you know, Facebook once in a while just to see how they're doing. Seem to be doing fine. So uh, that's good. And then uh, after our, we, uh, our lease was up at uh, Aspen, we were like, hmm, let's move somewhere else. We looked at Vegas and we said, you know, Vegas looks pretty good. Um, they are getting profession, you know, professional sports. This is back in 2015. And uh, by 2016, we, we lived here. And so um, it's, been, it's been nice. We like it. It's, you know, it's just, uh, we're just regular people that decided to... Uh, up and move and live here. So and this is kind of our experience and our our thing. And hopefully we can bring good, valuable information to you guys as well. Some of it's funny. Some of it is, you know, silly. And that's okay. You know, everyone's... There's some people that do Vegas vlogs that are dead serious about whatever they're doing. And that's fine too. If you like that content, it's definitely there. Uh, we kind of do a mix of everything. So, you know, you'll find me on Fremont Street doing Hunter S. Thompson or I look like this character from Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. And I like doing that. That's fun to me. That keeps things boring and more interesting for me. So, and hopefully it entertains you. And that's my whole intent. So that's kind of the thing with that. But uh, yeah, the, the last few uh, videos that we did on Vegas here were a little bit more, you know, serious. Uh, take the, you know, put the camera on the car and go down Fremont and show you the desolate areas of Las Vegas on the strip and, Stuff like that. So, but if you haven't seen that video, I do have commentary throughout that whole video. If you're interested, I'll leave a comment, or I'm um, sorry, I'll definitely you leave a comment down below, and then I will leave a link uh, for that video so you guys can see that. It's pretty interesting on um, how Vegas is just a ghost town when at this time uh, it's supposed to be, you know, bustling and busy with, you know, conferences and spring breakers and all this stuff going on here, and it's just dead. I mean, it just decimated the, um, you know, um, people's businesses and, uh, uh, you know, people's incomes and stuff like that. It's just pretty horrible. I'm sure it's same everywhere, uh, same scenario, but yeah, hopefully you guys are doing okay. Um, maybe it'll bring, you know, our community stronger together again, um, stuff like that. But, uh, I want to get to the news with you guys. <laughs> I want to get you to, uh, I, I follow this. If you're not on Twitter or something like that, or if you like Twitter, I have a link down below. If you want to follow us on Twitter, we do some pretty interesting uh, articles, photos, and videos on Twitter. Some stuff you won't see on YouTube. We put it on Twitter and all the other social media platforms. But uh, Twitter seems to be our growing uh, audience. Uh, so if you want to be a part of that, that's cool too. But there's a guy on there um, who's very reputable as far as like a, a reputable source of information is Vital Vegas. I don't know if you guys uh, have heard of Vital Vegas, but um, you know, Scott Robin's been around for a long time and he's very comical. And I'll sometimes I, we banter back and forth uh, with, with posts in different uh, replies to different posts and it's pretty comical it's it's a, a nice place to just let your hair down and have fun with you know whatever they're posting <laughs> but I post some really funny stuff on there uh, but yeah Vital Vegas definitely hook up with that guy in his um, post he has a vlog on uh, you know vitalvegas.com it's very interesting but he just wrote this um, article on his page and I want to go through some of the things that he was talking about and I did a video on this as well um, last week I'll post it in the description below so you guys can kind of compare and contrast if you're really bored and really interested in Vegas stuff uh, definitely check it out um, but he has the 11 ways uh, Las Vegas casinos will change after the shutdown and that's kind of the title of his article here and I agree with it a lot he's got like he's like dead on everything he does is like dead on he definitely knows his vegas stuff he's been around like i said 
he, he's the guy I go to for information about Las Vegas. And sometimes I'll regurgitate what he says. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just my own perspective on it. But he, it's like, he's like the guy to go to. Um, and basically, the, the number one thing that's going to get Vegas back, and let's get right into it, you guys, is that, you know, deals. Everybody wants a good deal here. Everybody wants to have that Vegas experience, you know, especially if it's your first time, if it's your second time, or if it's your hundredth time, you always want that Vegas experience. And that's why you see people that get the gold card, the diamond club and whatever club they're part of here in Vegas or hotel experience and stuff like that. They want that over and over again, because it's nothing like Vegas. There's nothing like Las Vegas. You will never find anything anywhere. Atlantic City, uh, I don't care where you go. There's nothing like the Las Vegas experience as far as entertainment capital of the world you've got all these stuff with shows and stuff like that and that's going to change we'll get into that in just a minute but people want a deal they want to know that they're being treated right they got a deal on something and people will go at no lengths to get a deal here i know that people will go on facebook and go to these groups to find the best deals in las vegas and by the way that's a great resource for you to go to if you are looking for your next deal or you're planning vacation or you're you know, planning taking your stimulus package and going, you know, I'm going to go to Vegas and we're going to live it up and we want to look for the best deal. It's probably a good idea to go to a Facebook deal, uh, you know, a Facebook group page for Vegas. There's plenty of them out there. You just pick the one that you like. I have a group page as well, but I don't really work on deals. But I do have a link where you can get 100 of my best deals in the link below here in the description. It's uh, my hundred. It's my hundred pro tips guide to Las Vegas. It's basically what it is, and I give you all the pro tips to Vegas, the, all the tips and tricks, and all that stuff you need to know before you come here. And all I have to give a little disclaimer because it might change. You know, what worked before this outbreak may not be the same scenario. So that's what I want. That's why I'm offering it for free. Um, so take advantage of it and check it out for sure. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> but I want you guys to have that. It's free. It's a free PDF. You just download it and, uh, take a look at it. And it's got over a hundred tips and tricks like food, where to go, what restaurants, what, you know, places are offering the best deals. What are their best deals or were the rest, but check it out. They may be continuing on with that stuff, you know, after this thing blows over, but it's all, it's a good thing to have. Trust me. Uh, but getting back to Vital Vegas, I'm stop cross promoting here. <laughs> it's kind of rude. I'm sure he gets it. I'm sure he gets it. Um, as far as Scott Rubin is the guy that runs it. Very reputable, by the way. But he says deals. You know, do, you know, want the best deal. Going to customer demand to builds to rebuild everything again for the casinos and building up things. He's got to be motivated to attract customers, and that's you know that's the key thing. You got to be motivated to attract these people to come back in. You want deals on flights. You got to get here somehow, right? You got to have like some you know compelling deal to get you here, and also the rooms. You got to have a you know room. What are these at like Hotel.com or Expedia or whatever you book? your room through uh, I recommend just go right to the hotel website itself and do some cross referencing and just see what kind of the deals are coming on because you may get a better deal through their website than you will the uh, you know the other uh, third party websites you know things of that nature but you get the idea but you want to do your homework when you uh, when Vegas opens up again so you can get the best deal possible so they need to dump obviously parking you know, if you're going to drive here from California, Arizona, or wherever you're coming from, um, parking fees have got to go. I don't know why they did that. That was just, especially for locals, they have to get rid of that for locals. If they want the local dollar to come back into the casinos, otherwise we ain't coming. We ain't got nowhere to park. There's nowhere for to park for us except uh, Planet Hollywood, Venetian, uh, and maybe uh, the mall if it's open. Uh, the win if you got like their gold card or whatever yeah you know you get the idea but you know they've got to drop these parking fees we ain't going to your casino that's pretty much it i'm pretty sure they're gonna find out right away if they continue on with these parking fees the locals are not coming to your they're not coming okay i'm not going to treasure island you gotta you know pay to park to all these places um even downtown they gotta loosen it up a little bit 
So, you know, people are not going to have that discretionary income that they did have, you know, before this outbreak. That is just pretty obvious. A lot of people are devastated because of this. And and it's horrible. And, I, you know, everyone's going to have to have tighten their belt and all this stuff and things like that. But you get the idea. But number two is buffets. You know, we're just talk food for a second because, like I said, that free thing I give you that down in the description, it's free. It's yours. Take it. Because, you know, buffets are going to change. I have buffets in there. But this is going to change. This is going to be the end of an era of buffets. You know, that they're getting more expensive anyway. So plus with this outbreak and all the, you know, center of disease control, the local uh, the center of disease control and all this other health and whatever city official comes in and says, you know, you can't have buffets. You got to open, you got the sneeze guard stuff. It's just not working. We got to have, uh, we have to have no people reaching in for their food, you know? So the only one I see actually staying open is probably Caesars, the back and owl. They'll probably do something uh, really outrageous to keep that one open, but everything else will probably shut down, to be honest with you. Um, you know, buffets like, you know, Treasure Island, Golden Nugget, uh, they're, they say they're going to be done for good. I'm just reading what this Vital Vegas has on his uh, blog here. Uh, other permanent closures are in the works. While buffets are fairly inexpensive, player perks for casinos and, you know, yada, yada, yada. There's just too much risk moving forward. Buffets were always weird in the first place, <laughs> I guess. And uh, new awareness and sensibility to related and potential uh, hygienic pitfalls for the buffets. It means a very uh, bad time for, you know, Vegas casinos to offer those. So, Definitely look out for the buffets to change here in Vegas. It's pretty sad because everyone loves to go to buffet. Even like we still get people that write and leave a comment like, yeah, I remember Vegas when they were offering like a dollar buffet or free buffet with, you know, whatever perk they're getting uh, for play and stuff like that. So that's, it's sad. It's long gone, but I'm pretty sure Bacchanal will pretty stay in the game. They'll have some things up their sleeve. And Aria and all the popular ones. Uh, hopefully the M Resort keeps theirs. But, um, and that even falls into like some resort businesses won't be back. And it's a sad thing, but Vegas, I mean, if there's a small tick in like recessionary stuff, Vegas is Vegas sees it first for sure. You know, we rely heavily on the tourist dollar. Everybody knows that. But some resort rooms and casinos are going to close. Um, you know, you got a myriad of associated businesses, such as you know bars and restaurants that operate inside these casinos, will shut down. There's no doubt about it. They cannot survive. They have to have people in buying and purchasing food, beverage, whatever it might be. These things will take a hit for sure. Um, I will do a more extensive um, closure list on what's different because I, someone did write back to me in a comment before and, and they said, you know, it'd be nice to know what um, some of these restaurants will stick around and stuff like that. It's too early to tell, to be honest with you. And, um, you know, hopefully we can uh, cover that as soon as Vegas opens up because we'll know the list soon enough a lot of these people are not going to get the sba loan the small business association loan and all that stuff they're not going to get that um the, or excuse me the small business uh administration but you get the idea that uh there's a lot of people not getting that you know they say it's a two trillion dollar thing but corporations are going to get that stuff first so you know and even the Drew, the Drew Casino, they have, you know, the big blue building across the street from Circus Circus. You know, that is, um, they tried to, while well, they're trying to, uh, before this happened, is, uh, you know, get that finished. Um, but that's going to shut. They're going to shut. The, they're not even going to finish that um, for sure. So that's going to go bye-bye. Everything else will stay open. Um I do foresee Circus Circus slowly remodeling um, now that this is happening. Uh, they want to do a remodel there because it has been purchased by the Treasure Island. Um, people from Treasure Island bought it. Uh, Phil Ruffin basically owns that. And, uh, 
yeah, so they're going to see a lot of stuff shutting down and stuff like that. I wonder, like, downtown uh, Fremont Street, because so much has changed there. They have a lot of different uh, stuff going on there. I'll keep you covered on that stuff as well, as far as what's coming, what's leaving, what project shut down. I'm sure we'll get that list as well, you know, soon enough as well. But anyway, you guys get the idea. Vegas is going to change a lot here. So another thing that is definitely going to happen here is uh, casino procedures. Okay. Oh, man. Because of, you know, social distancing and how you've got to handle yourself now, I don't know if you're going to come to Vegas with one of these uh, N95 masks or something that's homemade and you just put around your ears and walk around. I use this scarf. I double it up and fold it so it's kind of got a thicker barrier for myself. I don't know, it just makes me feel better. <laughs> I don't know. I am going to order an N95 custom-made mask. Uh, you can get it through AliExpress. If you guys are having a hard time getting N95 masks or anything suitable for that, for that kind of stuff, go to AliExpress and order from there. They have a ton of stuff there. So anyway, uh, so you're going to have social distancing in Las Vegas for sure. Uh, so some emergency policies will be uh, instituted permanently, including elements of social distancing, uh, capacity limits for sure. Um, this is already going on, as well as much more frequent cleaning of anything humans touch as far as like elevator buttons, uh, slot buttons and um, anything, you know, bar countertops, gameplay at the uh, bar and stuff like that. And they're going to have to use EPA-approved chemicals for that. Basically, disinfectant. Not that they don't already do that, but it's going to be more prevalent um, now that uh, things are going to get back into, you know, people coming here and touching things and stuff like that. They don't want your glommy hands coming out of the bathroom because you didn't wash your hands and you start fiddling around with buttons. They don't want that. They know who you are. Jeez. I know who you are. I've actually seen people like not wash their hands and just walk right straight out the door. And I'm thinking this is how shit gets spread for sure. Um, by the way, uh, the United States has the most reported cases of this uh, virus, by the way. Sad, but true. Wonder why. I don't know. I couldn't tell you. I'm trying to keep on track here, you guys. It's getting kind of... The coffee's talking. I got my mug. By the way, we got new merchandise. This is a perfect segue to talk about our merchandise because we're so on it. We're like the thing to get, right? So we have some new merchandise. You can get it in the links and stuff like that. I'll leave a link in there. But um, check it out. I even, got, I even designed a shirt when you come back to Las Vegas. A welcome back uh, Vegas shirt. If that needs to, uh, you know, if you need that kind of stuff, I don't know. I ordered a couple of things for myself. I still have to order some stuff for somebody else. Um, Ivy is going to get something from us because she buys us stuff. And so I have to, I have to rebuttal by buying her some stuff. Cause I feel bad when people buy us stuff. I just feel like, you know, we should give something back, you know, or, you know, something, but Anyway, yeah, look for that IV. We're going to be, uh, I got to wait for it to arrive here so I can mail it out to you. But anyway, back on track. Another thing Vegas should also do is to increase revenue here. It's not going to be gambling. It's not going to be entertainment. Definitely not entertainment. And I'll get to that in a second. It's not going to be uh, buffets for sure. It is going to be a lottery. Now, this is a far-fetched idea, I think, but Vital Vegas does touch on this. And... And it's like wishful thinking, but, you know, the the coffers are being quickly de de depleted and by this shutdown and tax revenue is being disrupted. So maybe it's about time we look at a lottery here where we go purchase lotto tickets here in the state of Nevada. That'd be great, wouldn't it? Now, and then people don't have to go to these, uh, go to the grocery store and uh, gamble at the grocery store. They can just get a lottery ticket and out the door they go. Um, maybe because, you know, 
a lot of people do do the lottery here, but they have to go to California. They have to go to the border of Prim, uh, Nevada and California. There's a little town called Prim, and they do offer lotto tickets. So it's just on the outside or outside border of California. Believe it or not, you got to check it out. If you ever hear go to Prim, that's pretty interesting. But uh, yeah, there's going to be... Um, I think it's a great idea, by the way, you put that in there, um, Scott, is uh, a lottery definitely is another revenue stream for Las Vegas. And I think people have been kind of um, screaming about that for a long time. It's like, we need a lottery here because not so many people are gambling here and stuff like that. And, you know, uh, UNLV does a lot of uh, historical numbers on Vegas and and how they measure Vegas's growth throughout the years and stuff like that. And even they would like, yeah, if, if we did have a lottery here, it would definitely um, increase the revenue in Las Vegas state revenue as far as that goes. So, yeah, great idea. I think it's great. Um, so let's talk about diversification. Um, what does diversification mean in sar as far as like, you know, after this is all done and we have to get back to business. And I'll just read this is that the coronavirus shutdown has made it more clear that Las Vegas is basically a one trick pony in terms of its tourism based economy. No doubt for sure. The uh, wild lip service has been given uh, to economic diversification. It's time to pony up and invest in education. Um, so we're talking like re-education of our uh, people that live here, the locals that live here. And we we suck basically is basically what the article is saying is like we're last freaking place here when it comes to education but the workforce needs to be re-educated as far as terms of like how things are being automated now we'll get into that in just a second as well and everything kind of convolutes and, and ties in together all the dots connect here as far as what we're talking about but as far as diversification and education everybody knows that when there's a downswing in economics and stuff like that you get laid off you have this uh, thing where you can uh, re-up for education or re a re-education in some field or something that you can go into, like electronics, computer, web design, uh, graphic design, or some kind of trade or whatever it might be. And they give you this allowance to go do that. By the way, if you have that, definitely take advantage of it because it's worth it. And so we need that here. We don't have it here. It sucks. It's really bad. Um, even to get to like the educational part of that, we don't even have that here. So as far as like teaching people like code and stuff like that, there are some places around here that teach it, but it's an astronomical amount of money just to even go through the program. So it's not even worth it. So you've got that going on, but diversification in education here in Las Vegas is a high priority. And that kind of cuts into like the cannabis industry here is huge, no doubt about it, but it's a tourist kind of a thing. Uh, but locals love it as well. But anyway, yeah, the tax dollars on the uh, cannabis industry are, it hasn't gone to education at all. So we have to figure out where that money's going and figure out, you know, how can we disperse this and make uh, a better educational system here to re-education our, our workforce, uh, get better education for our youth and, and K through 12 and things of that nature because we haven't seen nothing nothing's written in stone we can't even find any the numbers or the statistics on where that money has gone so that's really kind of horrible so just to let you know where that's at we could take some of that cannabis money and use it towards our diversification programs such as that anything else would be lotto <laughs> and i'm not even sure lotto does that i think it's just like roads and it's supposed to go to education but correct me if i'm wrong but i'm not even sure if it even goes to that so there's a lot of if issues, and I'm sure in your state or wherever you're from, everyone has their like you know political issues and where this money is getting uh, siphoned into. A lot of it's into this, a lot of it's into the political pockets of people that are running the the whole system anyway, and that kind of sucks. And that's everywhere. So I can't really say, you know, we deserve it more than somebody else does because it's it's everywhere. It's a, a disease almost. I mean, look at California. California is a Come on, you know, everyone's moving in, moving out, uh, more people moving out than in, but I don't know, man, California's gone, kind of, I don't know, <laughs> I just don't know, man, I don't, I don't even, I don't even want to move, I did want to move there at some point, but then I looked at it, I'm like, I don't want to move here, this is a nightmare, so let's get off of diversification for a while, we've been on that for a little bit here, but automation, that kind of ties into the workforce thing as well, 
uh, diversification and things like that. So you got big casinos that are rolling out more automation, and that is pretty prevalent. They've been doing that for about a year now here. They, they've been talking about it for over two years, but then in the last past year, they've actually rolled out like some of the automation as far as like, well, you know, when you get your drink, you know, you, you, you want to get your free drink, right? Well, not anymore. You got to... Uh, you got to have your player's card. You got to, you know, sit at a machine. And uh, when you put it in, it alerts the server to come, you know, serve you and whatever. And they keep track of your drinks and stuff like that. I'm sure they keep track of how much you're tipping as well. And it, uh, if you're not tipping, you're not, she ain't coming back. I can tell you that. So you've got that going on. Plus you got the, you know, um, the automation system itself where, you know, they're all there. I go to Westgate, you can go to MGM, you can go to, uh, let's see, I think Harris has it as well. And I think the link, the link has it. And I'll talk about the link in a second here, but it's really cool. They have a cool system. Uh, their beer, their beer wall is pretty cool. Um, but the, you don't have to, you don't even react to, uh, interact with humans on it. You just, you know, buy a beer package and you get this card and you swipe it you get a cup and you have full access to their beer, beer wall and all that stuff. It's pretty cool. But as far as like automation goes, they're cutting down on bartenders and servers and stuff like that with this automation system. And it's pretty prevalent through like MGM properties for sure. I haven't seen it in Caesars yet. Maybe I'm uh, missing something, but I don't, I don't think I've seen it in Caesars just yet. But I'm sure it's coming after this stuff's going on. And they're going to cut down a lot of stuff, a lot of employees because they're paying out and, um, you know, they're stretching their dollar out. They're like, oh, we'll take care of our employees up to blah, 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 when this thing opens up and things of that nature, which is great. I think they're, you know, they should do that. Um, and it's very generous for, for them to even offer it for sure, you know, carry over their health and their benefits and uh, their pay and stuff like that. So they're off work, they're getting paid, but they're, you know, staying healthy at the same time. So that's great. So they recognize that. That's awesome. You know, but as far as when they come back to work, it may be a different story. It may be like, hey, Susan or Bob, you know, we're going to have to get rid of you because we got this automated robot that'll serve, you know, people, drinks and whatever they want. And it uses AI to, uh, you know, uh, recognize the uh, drink menu and, and they could just talk to this uh, robot and it, it does the thing for them. Totally see that happening because they already have Tipsy Robot here at Caesars. And that's a pretty interesting little robotic thing you just go up to the kiosk and order your drink and it makes it for you it's kind of a cool little gimmick thing but that's the future that is like hey folks they're kind of seasoning our guests to here's this machine thing going on and get used to it because it may be a thing now it just comes in a box and everything's connected and all that stuff put your glass up and pours it all in there for you but yeah automation's coming for sure. I mean, they're going to cut down on what they've lost. So there's that. So fear of job loss is going to be a huge thing here for sure. But uh, Vital Vegas is hitting these points like boom, 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 automation. And what's going on? Theaters, events, and nightclubs. You can, can, can count on like some venues shutting down. Cirque du Soleil, they're all laid off. They might not survive. They're dependent on ticket sales and your butt sitting in a seat watching them uh, you know, doing flip de doos for you and, and all this wild, crazy stuff to music. And it's awesome to see, but they may shut down a few. They may only survive like Bellagio and um, maybe the win. I don't know. Everything else might just get shut down. And that's a sad thing because that's a, like a, a staple entertainment thing for Vegas. People come here to see these kind of shows. And New York might suffer as well i know they do circ uh, shows as well i think chicago um event venues rock you know rock and roll venues and stuff like that um pool parties nightclubs some nightclubs won't survive there'll be less uh i don't even think they will even roll out nightclub stuff right away it's going to take a while for that stuff to you know uh, come to full capacity on that kind of thing. So think about it. So theaters, nightclubs, and pool, pool parties for sure, you know, say goodbye to, I mean, pretty much say, it's what it's saying is it's like say goodbye to these social events because you have to have social distancing. You can't have people in crammed in large, you know, pool areas and frolicking around and 
uh, half naked bodies and <laughs> painting a lovely picture for you. But that's what's ha that's pretty much what happens here. Um, yeah, go to the Encore Beach Club thing um, for that kind of stuff. But it's funny to watch these people come out of the Encore Beach Club because you see like half naked people just piling out. You know, they're drunk and they're stumbling and they're trying to find their um, their ride or whatever they're doing. It's pretty comical because it's like, oh my gosh. But it's fun. It's all fun. It's Vegas. That's that's part of Vegas. It's all fun. It doesn't, you know, oh, they're... I hate it when people go, oh, you're sinning. They're such sinners. And you got the people with the bullhorns and the signs and the picket signs. And you were going to hell. You're a sinner. And for real, man, go somewhere else because it's pretty obvious. People are going to be doing that kind of stuff. But, um, yeah. So count on, like, the Tournament of Kings. Here's one Vital Vegas puts out on his uh, Twitter thing. Uh, by the way, if you're going to follow Vital Vegas on Twitter, it's Vital Vegas. That's it. But he's saying here, uh, nobody's talking about the Tournament of Kings at Excalibur. Um, that may be gone. You know what I mean? So eating your food, because you got to eat your food with your hands there. You know what I mean? What are they going to do? They may, I don't know. It might survive. It might, you know, might have plastic gloves or surgical gloves or whatever it might be to handle your food. But they got to pick up the surgical gloves everywhere and that's going to be a mess. So I don't know. And that's expensive to keep buying like plastic gloves for people to wear. Maybe they'll go to the silverware and, you know, fork and spoon kind of stuff. So there's that. So what did we cover? Work culture. Oh, that's next. The work culture. Let me zoom in on this for a second here. So let's say, you know, you got to go back to work. You don't know what your health state is. You don't know. We have it's going to be flu season here. It's going to be people getting sick. Uh, you got kids, uh, you know, uh, spread germs and illnesses and whatever they do. It's, and it goes home and it, you get sick and all that stuff. So you get the idea, right? Okay, so work culture. Turning up people um, uh, at work sick will be sent home, obviously, temporarily or even permanently. So, yeah, it might be a cutthroat kind of a thing here. So if you're sick here and you come down with something, or maybe they do temperature checks for employees, um, it could be a permanent thing is when you come in, uh, there's something that, you know, checks your temperature, but we have high heat summers. So how are they going to check for somebody that's been in like 112 degree heat, uh, coming in from work and they're still above, you know, 98 degrees, you know, you know what I mean? They may, uh, transfer that heat into the system. I don't know. It may defunct the uh, temperature check when you come in. Um, you're going to see more like employees and casino floor people using gloves and masks. That's for sure. They're going to have probably have their own designed corporate mask thing, N95 masks they have to use. Uh, I don't see the problem with most people wearing a glove or a mask. I think they probably prefer it. Even just to block out cigarette smoke or cigar smoke. Um, it may block that out. I don't know, but Anyway, let's get to shaking hands and uh, high-fiving because that'll be a thing of the past. I think that's going to be a t-shirt. I will have to design that t-shirt, by the way, is the elbow bump. And I'll have it right here. And you guys can buy the t-shirt. So when you come to Vegas, it'll be like the new Vegas. You know what I mean? So you, you when you greet somebody, it'll remind them like, hey, don't touch my, don't shake my hand, bump my elbow. And hopefully you're coughing and sneezing in your elbow too. I hate it when people just cough and like, ugh, ugh, or they sneeze and they don't cover their, I hate that. That is so gross, man. And you guys, it, guys and girls like to high five each other. Elbow, high elbows. That's, I mean, I don't know, man. You guys are, uh, I don't like shaking people's hands. I really don't. I, I don't. I'm a, especially, I'm a germaphobe, a sort of. It's just like people, and I think it's a great gesture. Someone comes like, hey, how's it going? And it's like, yeah, uh, I'm a phobe. I uh, do the fist bump or the, mm, I don't even know. I'm not even sure if the fist bump is going to suffice anymore. But, um, but you know, the last one on his list, you know, looking at going back to Vital Vegas here, thing here. Never take Las Vegas for granted again. 
So he says, like, some things we vow not to take for granted. So here's his list of things. You know, the Bellagio Conservatory, because it's a free thing to go to. The views from the Strat. The Strat's awesome. The Stratosphere. We're talking about the Stratosphere, the tallest structure in Vegas. Go there if you have never not going there. It's totally remodeled in there. The Eiffel Tower Restaurant. Drinks with Friends. Cranky Craps Dealers. Wheel of Fortune. Uh, flair, you know, the bartenders like to flare it up a little bit and toss around stuff. I don't even know if they can do that again. Uh, being approached by sex workers. Yes, that is a thing here, but they mostly do it inside the casinos now. Um, quads. I'm not sure what quads are. Is that legs? I'm not sure. Guy Fury. I think it's a restaurant. That guy's crazy. Vegas podcasts like this one, by the way. Like, subscribe, hit that uh, bell button. Cranes, you know, construction cranes, that's going to probably come down. Uh, you knowing a guy, hey, I know a guy that can get us uh, into this club or, you know, we can get we can get in. I know a guy. Right. <laughs> that guy's gone. Drunchies. I'm not sure. What it is. I'm going to have to look that one up. Is that a drunk munchies? I don't know. Drunk munchies, I think it is. What are... Uh, yeah, Planet 13 has the the munchies. You can get the munchies at Planet 13, by the way. They have, like, food there now. Like, regular food. Regular, like, bistro kind of stuff. Uh, Viva Vision on uh, Fremont Street. Viva Vision is awesome. It's 4K. I'm pretty sure that schedule is going to change. <laughs> just for social distancing. I don't know. I don't know, man. They should just run it 24-7. Uh, tacky magic shows on Fremont Street for sure. Uh, crappy, oh, crappy social media posts. Yeah, the casino uh, social media is like really bad. I don't know who does their social media, but it's bad. Uh, it's pretty cheesy. They should do, they should have Vital Vegas or somebody on one of his team because they're just freaking funny. They get more reaction from their posts than any other. Um, corporate type, you know, you get it. Aquariums at the Mirage. Mirage, yeah, the dolphins. Uh, Silverton uh, has definitely a huge aquarium. The Golden Nugget has definitely got a huge aquarium. Um, grocery store employees. You can gamble at a grocery store. All the grocery stores have a casino, a tiny casino in them. You can, they have slot machines. It's no joke, man. You can gamble anytime you want here. There's no kidding. Well, not anymore, because now <laughs> I'm sure everything's going to be shut down after 12. Uh, Absinthe, which is a great show in, at Caesars, right in front of Caesars. Absinthe is one of the best shows. Uh, Cirque uh, shows, for sure. I don't know. Absinthe might survive. They, they'll survive. I think they'll survive. You'll probably see a lot of Cirque um, people going to Absinthe and Atomic. Atomic is one of their other ones. They do it at uh, Venetian. Okay, so lap dances. Okay, when you do go to a club, like a strip club, are you going to get a lap dance or a hand dance? See what I'm saying? Social distancing? Anyway, ride share. Ride share. You're going to have to have a barrier between you and the passenger because you don't know if they can sneeze on your neck. So ride share and cabbies might have to have some sort of state regulated thing going on. Uh, Sigma Derby at the D. Sigma Derby at the D never dies. You guys, I, that, they've had that thing for a long time. It's like a mechanical 25 cent, um, you know, um, derby race, basically. Everybody knows about it. By the way, if you haven't gone up to the D up in their um, new remodeled upstairs, it's freaking awesome. They did such a good job. I went through there. Maybe I'll leave, I'll leave a link to the video I did for that. I did I did do a walkthrough, but anyway. Uh, cookies in the High Limit Poker Room at Cosmo. You can kiss that goodbye. They're probably going to give you a mint now. Uh, bill breakers, people that break your bills for you, you know, because you're a high roller. Housekeeping, and yes, even sports. So we have to take into consideration of what this is doing to, like, just not your city, not just our city, but around the world, you're going to see this everywhere. All this stuff, it's all related. It's all 
interconnected in some way. By the way, Vital Vegas, thank you so much for letting me read this off. Uh, I'm giving you lots of plugs and uh, kudos to uh, the work you do. So if you haven't gone to vitalvegas.com, this is where I'm reading it from. This is the source I get most of my news from. And uh, I trust it. This guy's been around for a while, so that's why I regurgitate some of the stuff that he does. And I appreciate it for sure. And you guys will see more stuff on Twitter if you just go to the links provided below. And also, if you're just stumbled upon this podcast, definitely consider subscribing because we have more news, more stuff to talk about, and more Vegas things uh, unfolding as we get closer and closer to opening up Las Vegas just for you. I hope I didn't bore you guys too much. But anyway, stay healthy. I know I gave a lot of information to you if you have to go back into the video and check things out definitely do that but i give you my fr pr free pro tips to guide to las vegas it's down in the description below definitely that's free click on it you get a free pdf from me there's no strings attached it's absolutely free and thank you guys i'll see you guys in the next podcast or video take care and stay safe all right bye-bye <music>